hey guys welcome to this lecture so today we are going to discuss about the basic configuration of our Palo Alto next generation firewall so whenever you plug in into you know whenever you plug in your new firewall into the network so Palo Alto has given you one out of band uh, management interface which you can use to you know onboard your firewalls uh, into your management network right so what happens these days you know we segregated I um, mean we have segregated our production traffic from the management traffic so we have a different network subnet for production traffic and we have a different network subnet for our management traffic right so that's the reason we call it out of band management interface so you can onboard your firewalls into your management network because you know these days managed service providers are managing the uh, uh, entire infrastructure of any organization right uh, whose core business is not uh, IT so we outsource our IT infrastructure to manage service providers okay so now what we are going to do is uh, whenever you spin up any Palo Alto VM in your uh, you know hypervisor platforms you can take the console of that particular VM and you can configure the uh, IP addresses statically by default DSCP is enabled right so it tries to take the IP address uh, from your DSCP server but if there is no server available in that particular network subnet uh, then you know you can configure it statically okay so be it your VM firewalls or physical firewalls uh, it comes with the DSCP settings and default username password is admin admin to access the CLI or web UI so what we are going to do today is you know we are going to onboard our firewall so this is our Palo Alto VM which we are going to uh, spin up we are going to configure the management interface IP address statically and we will configure this particular IP address on that interface right and we will onboard this particular firewall into our management network and then my laptop is also connected with this particular network sub, uh, subnet so I will be able to open up the web UI of this firewall right in my laptop and then we can do the configuration from web UI web user interface of the firewall okay and uh, we will configure the gateway of this subnet and we will configure the DNS servers so that these uh, firewalls can reach to the update servers and whenever you are going to activate the licensing by using the auth codes so it can communicate with the entitlement server okay so let's uh, begin with the configuration so we have this particular firewall which is already connected to my management network you can see this management interface is connected so let's take the console so if I will take the console of this particular firewall you can see uh, it has already taken the IP address from my DSCP server 10.1.1.6 right so let's see if we are able to uh, log in into this particular IP address so if I will type uh, HTTPS 10.1.1.6 so let's see if we are able to reach this particular IP address or not so right now you can see that this web page is not vis uh, reachable to us because you know my laptop is not into this particular subnet so what we need to do is we need to configure the IP address of this particular machine into our subnet so that we can you know access the web page of that particular uh, firewall you know from our laptop so right now you can see this is not reachable you know so what you need to do is uh, you need to log in into the firewall so default user credentials admin admin after verifying your account it will ask you to enter the old password and then change your password and uh, sometimes in VMs you know you need to enter multiple times the default username and password this is the expected behavior in Palo Alto VMs uh, it takes two to three times to log in into the uh, firewall because your management plane takes time to come up you know it depends how much RAM you have allocated to your virtual machine okay so now uh, you can just check the current settings show system info so you can see my IP address my host name net mask default gateway and IP assignment type is DSCP right 
all these details you will be able to see and uh, you can uh, see the CPU ID, UU ID and serial number right now is unknown because we have not activated the licenses on this particular machine so it is showing uh, unknown right so now what we need to do is we need to configure the uh, IP address okay statically so what you need to do is you need to type configure and you will enter into the configuration mode now uh, you are supposed to configure the uh, IP address statically so before you know before that you need to change the interface type from DSCP to static so what you need to do is uh, set device config system right type static so by doing this you have changed the uh, interface type from DSCP to static and now you can configure the IP address so, so set device config system IP address and now you can assign the IP address 1.5 then netmask 255.255.255.0 default gateway 192.168.1.254 and then our DNS settings and servers then you need to define your primary server that is 8.8.8 .8 and secondary server is going to be 4.2.2.2 after doing this you need to just hit commit so that your configuration can be committed to the box so generally it takes time you know it depends again it depends how much RAM you have allocated to your virtual machine accordingly uh, it takes time right and it depends on your physical hardware as well which particular chassis you are owning so if you are going with the high-end chassis they have a huge amount of RAM available so you know these jobs they take like a few seconds only uh, to be done so let's wait and once this job is done then what we are supposed to do is we need to just hit this particular IP address you know 192.168.1.5 and you will see a web page will open up here so we will be able to access the GUI of our firewall right so this is how we configure uh, you know IP addresses statically through CLI in Palo Alto next generation firewalls so 98% generally it's like almost complete so let's try to hit the IP address 192.168.1.5 and you can see you know we have got the previous error because of the certificate so I'll tell you later on how we can resolve this problem as well because our browser is not able to trust this particular website and it is giving us that you know this certificate is not valid so we will discuss this later on and uh, here you can see job is completed and uh, you can come out from configuration mode and now you can check the uh, system settings right so if you type show system info you will be able to see uh, you know IP address default gateway right everything has been changed now right and IP assignment type is static earlier it was DSCP okay so similarly uh, you once this web page will be loaded we will log in into this web page and then we will see how from GUI you can change the uh, management interface uh, IP addresses but uh, you need to be very sure when you are making such changes that uh, you should not lose your connectivity because you know generally what happens uh, being a managed service provider if you are working remotely and if you're changing the IP addresses on these interfaces there might be chances that by mistake you have allocated a wrong IP address there and you have lost the control you know because generally uh, what happens whenever any field engineer goes on site you know it is going to rack stack the device then he will connect uh, to the device through console cable if it is not a virtual environment right so he will connect the device with the console cable and then he will share his screen to you and you will take the console and do the configuration right and you can get the access through remote once you have assigned the IP address from your subnet right this is one way of doing similarly when you spin up any firewall in cloud infrastructure like AWS or Azure then I mean you can take the uh, you know console access of those devices and uh, you can configure the IP addresses on the interfaces 
and uh, accordingly you can you know bring them on your management interf management network and access them remotely okay so this is how we onboard the devices so generally it takes time because you know this uh, website is coming from the management server which is running inside the firewall so if you see login.php so php is a web server technology you know uh, i mean it's a web technology uh, so it means there is a web server running inside your firewall management plane which is serving this web page right so that's the reason we call it web gui or we can say web ui web user interface so you know in traditional firewalls you used to get the ssh i um, cli uh, window through which you used to do the configuration but now we are moving towards the next generation features and uh, you know uh, configuring your next generation policies through CLI is quite difficult. Only experts, you know, working in TAC and uh, experts, you know, who are doing deployments from ages, they are experienced in the CLI, so they can do it from CLI. But firewall configurations generally are done best from web UI only because there are multiple things which we need, which you need to enable and disable on a rule right so multiple profiles you need to call so that's the reason you know it becomes really uh, important to do the configuration through the web ui so it is taking uh, a bit longer uh, it happens you know because just now we have fired up this machine and uh, you know management server might be busy so it takes its own time to uh, come up right because the first time it is coming up so let's wait for it and then we, I'll show you how you can change the IP addresses through the web UI and if you make any mistake how you can lose the access as well okay okay so now uh, our web UI is lo loaded properly so let me just add the username and uh, let's see if we are able to log in so I've entered my credentials and now you can see it is showing me creating administrative session so now it will log in into the firewall so this is the web interface of the firewall right and now you can see that whatever ip we have configured through cli now we can able to open up that particular ip address right and we will be do the uh, we will be able to do the configuration the basic configuration required to onboard this particular firewall you know so what i'm going to do is uh, i have just uh, taken this new firewall to give you the configuration snapshot but uh, we have these firewalls in our uh, topology and this is the topology where we have ubuntu server windows server and one pc testing pc and you can see this is my management plane network you know which is uh, a different subnet and this is my data plane network which is a different subnet right so my data plane traffic is segregated from my management plane traffic okay so uh, we will do the basic configuration on this firewall so that this machine can reach over the internet right you can see this interface is connected with internet and this interface is connected to my LAN, LAN side of the uh, network, right? So we'll do the basic security configurations, we will do the uh, NAT, right? We will update the routing table so that this machine can talk to internet and, you know, we can onboard, I mean, we can enable the internet for these machines for this particular network segment, okay? So now uh, you can see that GUI has been loaded of that particular firewall so it will give you the disclaimer or welcome message you know that these are the features which have been uh, uh, enabled on this particular new pan os so once you have logged in uh, you can see this is the dashboard you get right and these widgets you can uh, change you can add top applications you can add a high availability status your interfaces a status right you can add you can remove these uh, widgets so now let's go to the device section so if you go to device uh, here you see setup right and once you click setup you will see the journal settings panorama settings panorama is a centralized server from where you can manage your uh, entire uh, state of firewalls you know uh, let's say you are a company running with 100 firewalls so you need a central management server through which you can manage all your firewalls okay so these are the basic uh, settings available which you can configure so now jumping straight forwardly towards the interfaces so you can see this is my management interface and this is the ip address i have configured 
and these are the services which are running currently ping https ssh so uh, we can do the pdi because ssh service is also enabled so if you are going to type uh, the ip address of the firewall and if you try to open up the pdi session with this particular firewall so you will be able to uh, log in into it right so let me just show you so you can see this is our firewall okay and uh, if i will expand these services so if you click on it you will be able to see that how your ip assignment has been done through static or dscp client your ip address netmask default gateway speed is auto negotiate mtu and what are the administrative services which are running on this particular interface so https uh, https connection is allowed ssh connection is allowed and if you talk about network services so ping is allowed right and similarly you can enable snmp uh, user id sys log listener right these are the details user id which we are going to discuss then you can also restrict uh, the user from a particular subnet only to access this particular uh, uh, firewall right so you can click on add and you can just simply allow that i just want uh, this particular uh, subnet to access my firewall because this is my management uh, subnet right so my management subnet okay so you can make certain changes so now uh, if any ip address other than this network subnet won't be able to open up this web ui okay so these type of filtering or you can say restrictions you can put right here you can see this is our firewall this ssh connection is allowed right so let me just do commit and you can see that after commit the devices with the, that particular subnet ip only will be able to access this particular firewall rest rest of the devices won't be able to access this particular firewall so after the successful commit only uh, devices with that particular ip address i mean from that particular subnet ip address will be able to access the web ui and ssh and you know uh, will be able to ping this particular ip address of the management interface so that's it for this particular lecture in the next lecture we will see how you can configure the administrators and uh, you know how you can activate your licenses and we will see the other basic configuration and then we will move on to your basic onboarding right basic uh, configuration required to allow any internet on any particular machine right so thanks for watching this video we have a complete basic course available for palo alto next generation firewalls it will also cover the panorama so i would request you to visit our website ngcloudx.com